All throughout history, in fact as far back as the 18th century, humans have been doing their best to categorize animals into various species, families, and so on. But not every species fits in neatly with the others. In fact, there are some animals out there which are just straight up bizarre. From the worm that looks like a, uh, well, you'll see what, to the dragon that lives in the water, here's the 20 strangest animals that are hard to believe are real. <sighs> Number 20, Eurekis unisinctus. The gable might be spotted if you're browsing one of South Korea's many seafood markets and happen to see a bucket full of wriggling phalluses. It's a marine spoonworm that's also referred to as the penis fish. Yep, and we can see why. This animal looks strange, doesn't it? Gable is a mud-flat dwelling worm that some diners consume for its purported aphrodisiac properties, but most people eat it because they enjoy the flavor. It's chewy, salty, and unexpectedly sweet when eaten raw. The gable spends its whole existence feeding on others until it's eaten. It makes tunnels that serves as homes for crabs and fish, earning it the alternative moniker, the flat innkeeper worm. In addition, this innkeeper provides free food for its visitors in the form of plankton that's been caught in the slime trail. Some claim that the sweetness of fresh gable is rinsed off when prepared for restaurants. It's often served with a salty sesame oil sauce or a hotter dip composed of vinegar and goju jang. And if you prefer to eat your penis fish cooked, then you can grill it on a skewer with salt, pepper, and some sesame oil. I just imagine preparing one of these as a skewer, and I think I might wince as I try to put the skewer through my penis fish. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Leafly Sea Dragon the sole marine fish in the family Synagothidae, which also contains sea dragons, pipefish, and seahorses, is the leafy sea dragon, which belongs to the Ficodurus genus. It's found in Australia's southern and western beaches. The term derives from the appearance, which has long leaf-life protrusions that protrude from the body in all directions. These protrusions are solely employed for concealment and not propulsion. The dorsal and pectoral fins on the leafy sea dragon's back, which are located closer to the tail end, help it move forward. They move slow through the water using these tiny fins, which are almost entirely transparent and concealable. This gives the appearance of floating seaweed, an excellent camouflage. It's the maritime symbol of the state of South Australia and a key area for regional marine conservation. Locals refer to them as leafies. South Australia has an annual leafy sea dragon festival. It's a celebration of the Fleuriu Peninsula's ecology, arts, and culture, with the leafy sea dragon as its central object. Over 7,000 people attended the festival's first edition in 2005. Number 18. Frogmouth. A group of nocturnal birds known as the frogmouths includes owl nightjars, swifts, and hummingbirds. Frogmouths are spread across Indo Malay and Australia. They got their name because of their enormous frog like gape and flattened hook beak, both of which they utilize to catch insects. They can't fly very well. They lie horizontally on trees throughout the day, their cryptic plumage serving as cover. In the fork of a branch, a female may lay up to three white eggs that are incubated by the male during the day and by the female at night. The three Podarga species are gigantic frogmouths with enormous flat, wide bills that are only found in Australia and New Guinea. Small vertebrates, such as frogs and mice, which are sometimes battered on a stone before swallowing, are known to be among their favorite foods. Researchers Kata Tomes and Gregor Hain Leichserning from the Experimental Aesthetics Department at the University Hospital Jena in Germany discovered that the frogmouth bird species is the most Instagrammable bird species in a journal paper that was published in April 2021. The visual appeal of more than 27,000 bird pictures on Instagram was examined using an algorithm and it was discovered that images of frogmouths garnered the most likes in relation to post visibility to users. So if Kim Kardashian was a bird, she'd be a frogmouth. How about that? Number 17, Christmas Tree Worm. 
Spiral Brancus gigantus, sometimes referred to as the Christmas tree worm, is a two-building worm that's found in tropical waters all over the globe. These small marine worms are appreciated by underwater photographers and aquarists because of how much they resemble spindly fur trees. They continue to be ubiquitous and have a huge population despite human interest and there being no conservation initiatives in place. Christmas tree worms can grow up to 1.5 inches in diameter and 1.5 inches in length, but they can be so little that they only weigh a couple ounces and don't develop beyond an inch. Two crowns can be seen sticking out from the tube-shaped bodies of these worms. The radiolas, which are the spine-derived appendages that resemble hair, are arranged into crowns that resemble Christmas trees. The crowns come in a variety of vivid hues, including white, blue, red, orange, and yellow. The radiolas use their cilia, which resemble hairy bristles, for respiration and to capture food. Tropical waters between the Caribbean and the Indo-Pacific are home to the Christmas tree worm. They like shallow seas that are no deeper than 100 feet. These worms aren't caught for food and aren't caught in commercial fishing nets, but because of their brilliant hues, they captivate underwater photographers, divers, and aquarists. Divers have to wait for Christmas tree worms to emerge since they're reticent creatures. They can be disturbed by impatient people who want to get a better look though, so be gentle if you're going to see them in the wild. Number 16. King of Saxony Bird of Paradise a member of the Bird of Paradise family, the King of Saxony Bird of Paradise is an amazing bird. It only exists in New Guinea's highland forests. This species was described by Adolf Bernard Meyer of the Dresden Museum and British Ornithologist Club Bulletin from December 1894. Albert of Saxony, the then King of Saxony, was honored with both the common name King of Saxony and the scientific specific designation Alberti. The length of the mature King of Saxony Bird of Paradise is around 22 centimeters. The male is black and yellow with two extremely long scalloped enamel blue-brown plumes that may be raised independently at the bird's command. He also has brownish gray legs, a dark brown iris, and a black beak with a vivid aqua green gape. The female has a barred grayish brown color. The ornate head plumes on the male are so peculiar looking that when the first specimen was transported to Europe, many assumed it was a fake. The King of Saxony Bird of Paradise engages in vocalizations and physical wooing activity during mating, which is accentuated by its gorgeous and distinctive plumage. The occipital feathers, or head wires, of the King of Saxony are unique because they no longer have the typical feather structure and are instead striking ornamation with no practical use. Number 15. Great Sage Groose The biggest groose in North America is the larger sage groose, sometimes referred to as the sage hen. Its range includes the western sagebush region of the United States as well as southern Alberta and Saskatchewan in Canada. The legs of adult greater sage groose are feathered to the toes and have a long pointed tail. The mature male is gray in color with a white breast, a yellow patch above each eye, and a dark brown throat with a black belly. Two yellowish sacs on the male neck expand during courting displays. In its breeding grounds, the greater sage groose lives permanently, though it may travel briefly during the winter to lower elevations. When mating, it utilizes a sophisticated lek system and builds its nest on the ground under sagebush or grassy areas. It consumes mostly sagebush along with other plants and insects when foraging on the ground. Unlike other groose, the greater sage groose lacks a muscular crop and can't digest hard grains. Due to habitat destruction, this species is declining across its range and several national and international organizations have declared it to be vulnerable or nearly threatened. Come on guys, let's try to help out this cool bird! Number 14. Anglerfish the deepwater anglerfish, with the furious expression, is entitled to be kind of irritable. It might be the ugliest animal in existence, and it inhabits the most hostile environment on Earth, the dark, isolated bottom of the ocean. More than 200 different species of anglerfish exist, the majority of which dwell up to a mile below the surface in the gloomy depths of the Atlantic and Antarctic seas, while some also occur in shallow tropic habitats. They're typically dark gray to dark brown in appearance and have gigantic heads and mouths that resemble crescents loaded with pointed transparent teeth. Some anglerfish grow to be extremely huge, measuring up to 3.3 feet. However, the majority are noticeably smaller, often shorter than a foot. Only females have its most distinguishing characteristic, a section of dorsal spine that sticks out above their lips like a fishing pole, giving rise to their name. 
This built-in rod lures creatures near enough to be caught by its lure of glowing flesh. They can really swallow prey that's up to double their own size because of the size of their jaws and the flexibility of their bodies. The male has no need for such an adaptation since he's much smaller than the female. It's changed into a permanent parasitic mate rather than searching the wide abyss for a female. A juvenile free-swimming male angler grips onto a female with his razor-sharp teeth. The male gradually loses his eyes and all of his internal organs, with the exception of his testes, and physically unites with the female, entering her bloodstream and attaching to her skin. Six or more mates will be carried by a female on her body. This sounds like a pretty kinky fish. Number 13. Echidnas. The echidna, sometimes known as a spiny anteater, is a peculiar creature. It's so distinctive from all others that scientists and researchers are still baffled by it. Since ancient times, the echidna hasn't altered much, adapting to live while other species went extinct. But what distinguishes echidnas from other mammals in reality? Echidna females produce eggs. Monotree mammals are those that lay eggs. There are only four species of echidna and one species of platypus among the world's five monotremes. The mountains, the deserts, and the forests of Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea are all home to echidnas. They're solitary beings who take care of themselves. Depending on the season and the availability of food, echidnas may be active during the day, at night, or both. An echidna has a small head, tiny eyes, and a long nose that's often referred to as a beak. The echidna's eyes don't let it see well, but its keen hearing and smell do, providing this strange creature with the knowledge it needs to thrive. The spines, or hollow, barbless quills that cover the short-beaked echidna's back and sides nearly entirely conceal its back fur. Less hair and more spines are evident on long beak echidnas. The two-inch long beige and black spines on all four kinds aid the echidna in hiding from predators and undergrowth. The echidna uses its beak's tipped nostrils to find its snack. Additionally, it's responsive to electrical impulses from an insect's body in the rubbery nose. It's powerful enough to plow up the forest floor in pursuit of insects and crack apart hollow wood. Number 12. Shoveler. The shovel-shaped beak of the appropriately named Northern Shoveler distinguishes it from all other ducks immediately. This medium-sized duck has a tendency to sit with its back somewhat higher than its front, almost as if its beak were dragging its front half down. Breeding male shovelers are bright white, blue, green, and red in color, but their white chest and lower flanks are their most distinctive characteristics. <laughs> Males glow blue on the top wing and green on the secondary feathers when flying. Female and young shovelers have brown molting, and while they're resting, you may occasionally see powdered blue on their wings. The most distinctive field feature of this species is its enormous orange beak. In shallow wetlands, northern shovelers often have their heads down, busy sweeping their bills side to side to remove aquatic invertebrates and seeds from the water. In shallow wetlands, coastal marshes, rice fields, flooded fields, lakes, and sewage lagoons, the northern shoveler can be found grazing. They build their nests close to wetlands or in nearby grassy areas. Number 11. Pangolins. These nocturnal isolated creatures are readily identified by their thick scaly covering. Pangolins that are frightened will conceal their heads with their front legs, leaving their scales exposed to any prospective predators. The razor scales on the tail may be used to lash out while the creature will entirely roll up into a ball if it's touched or grabbed. Pangolins, also known as scaly anteaters due to their preferred diet, are the most trafficked animals in the world. Demand for their meat and scales is highest in Asia and is increasing in Africa. Additionally, there's a market for pangolin items in the US, notably for the leather that may be used for boots, purses, and belts. There's four different species found in Africa and four different species found in Asia. The IUCN Red List of Threatened Species lists two of the eight pangolin species as critically endangered, and all eight are protected by local, national, and international legislation. China raised protection for the indigenous Chinese pangolin to the highest degree in June of 2020, closing a critical gap for the species' domestic use. Additionally, the government will no longer allow the use of pangolin scales in traditional medicine. A massive gain, considering that an estimated 195,000 pangolins were trafficked in 2019 alone for solely their scales. Number 10. 
Northern Stargazer. This fish has a wonderful name that gives the impression that it's a mystic fish that contemplates philosophy and the nature of the whole universe. Actually, it seems like it was dropped on its head as a newborn. Although there are many fish in the ocean that are frankly pretty unattractive, this one really stands out particularly. It's a skilled hunter, however, and it lives through all the oceans, especially off the east coast of the United States. They're venomous as well, which heightens the fear factor, but the most terrifying aspect of it comes from its unusual ambush strategies, which include partially burying itself in the sand so that all you can see before it strikes is a pair of ominous eyes and a mouth looking at you. Just like a monster from a horror movie, they'll wait until something comes a bit too close before springing out to capture their prey and disappearing back beneath the sand. They may be spotted at Virginia Beach and Myrtle Beach, so next time you're around, keep an eye out for that little face in the sand. Number 9. The Sunda Flying Lemur A kind of Kolugo, the flying lemur is indigenous to Southeast Asia, from Malaysia to Southern Myanmar, Thailand, Southern Vietnam, and Indonesia to Singapore. The Sunda flying lemur, while being referred to as a flying lemur, is not a lemur and also can't fly. Instead, it glides jumping through the treetops. It only lives in trees, moves about at night, and eats delicate plant components including young leaves, shoots, flowers, and fruits. A single child is carried on the mother's belly for the duration of the 60-day gestation period, kept there by a sizable skin membrane. It's a species that depends on forests. National law protects the Sunda flying lemur. Locals often use spears or other deadly weapons to hunt the Sunda flying lemurs for a variety of purposes, including food and fur. It's well recognized that habitat loss happens sporadically, especially in emerging nations like Malaysia. This species faces a major danger from local subsistence hunting in addition to habitat degradation and deforestation. For this species, competition with the plantain squirrel poses additional difficulty. More research needs to be done on the population decline, but for now it's thought that the pace of this decline doesn't warrant placement in a category other than least concern. Although the Sunda flying lemur is an adept climber, it's defenseless on the ground. From the neck, the gliding membrane travels down the limbs to the tips of the fingers, toes, and nails. A patagium is a kite-shaped skin that's extended for gliding. It can glide across a 100 meter distance with an elevation loss of no more than 10 meters. Number 8. Rhinoceros Hornbill The tip of the rhinoceros hornbill's beak is adorned with a distinctive golden yellow horn known as a cask. The bird's sounds are amplified by the cask, a hollow structure comprised of keratin, the same substance found in human fingernails. The tail feathers are white and they have black feathers on their wings and bodies. Rhinoceros hornbill males and females seem identical to one another, however males have an orange or red ring around their eyes, while the females have a white ring. The rhinoceros hornbill is the state bird of Sarawak, Malaysia, and for some of the indigenous Dayak people of Borneo, it symbolizes the king of birds. This species is exclusive to the woods of Peninsula, Malaysia, and the islands of Sumatra, Java, and Borneo. Hornbills are under danger from both hunting and habitat degradation. While several components of the bird, especially the feathers, beak, and cask, are employed in costumes and ceremonies, hunting is done for both food and traditional remedies. Because rhinoceros hornbills can't utilize secondary rainforests, their range is even more constrained. Number 7. Red Handfish in Frederick Henry Bay, Tasmania, one may find the red handfish, a species of handfish belonging to the genus Thymichthys. The red coloration and little flattened wart-like protuberances that cover the body set the red handfish apart. There are two color variations, a bright red morph with red coloring on both the body and fins and white fin margins separated by a black line, and a molted morph with a pink body covered in many red patches, and transparent pink fins displaying some brilliant red patches.
Small, highly scattered populations and local increases in density of local purple urchins provide general challenges to red handfish. Red handfish need the seaweed ecosystem for protection and breeding, but native purple urchins overgraze it. Low seaweed levels on urchin cause barren areas throughout the summer show that the loss of seaweed habitat may be a major danger to the population's long-term sustainability. In addition, the risk of nutrient runoff, pollution, siltation, and turbidity is increased increased by the presence of urban development nearby, degrading the environment. Number 6. Victoria Crowned Pigeon The Victoria Crowned Pigeon, a very beautiful and perceptive ground bird, is certainly interesting to see. It's quite common to see it at a zoo or aviary. The Victoria Crown Pigeon was domesticated for hundreds of years after being brought to surrounding islands from New Guinea. Although they're somewhat uncommon in the pet bird trade, they are a common sight in zoos and aviaries in the United States and UK. The dodo bird, which is now extinct, is most closely related to this species, which is the biggest extant pigeon. It was given the name Victoria in honor of Queen Victoria because of her royal bearing and brilliant brown crown with complex lace-like designs. Victoria crowned pigeons were targeted for their flesh and feathers in the New Guinean jungles. Due to habitat loss and poaching, their natural population has drastically increased, putting the species in risk of becoming extinct. Its status as a protected species has improved from threatened to near threatened. Its native environment is, however, continuously being destroyed. Victoria crowned pigeons are a magnificent bird with powdered blue body feathers, crimson eyes, and a black mask with maroon breasts. On their wings and in a band on their tail feathers, they exhibit a paler blue. Number 5. The Naked Mole Rat the sand puppy, often referred to as the naked mole rat, is a rodent that lives underground and is native to certain parts of East Africa. The only mammalian thermoconformer with an almost totally cold-blooded method of controlling body temperature, the naked mole rat is one weird critter. It also features a complicated caste system that's separated into caste for reproduction and caste for non-reproduction. It can survive and even flourish in a hostile subterranean environment because it has a very atypical physiology and behavioral traits. The naked mole rat's epidermis is not sensitive to pain and its metabolic and respiratory rates are very low. They're noteworthy for their longevity, resistance to cancer, and capacity for oxygen independence. Reproductively active female naked mole rats routinely associate with stranger males, in contrast to reproductively inactive females. It's thought that the preference for strange males among sexually active females is an adaptation meant to prevent inbreeding. Inbreeding is discouraged because it often leads to the proliferation of negative recessive genes. Number 4. Wabagong the 12 species of carpet sharks that belong to the Erectolibidae family are collectively known as wabagongs. They're mostly found in Australia and Indonesia, although one species, the Japanese wabagong, may be found as far north as Japan in shallow, temperate, and tropical seas of the western Pacific Ocean and eastern Indian Ocean. The name wabagong, which refers to the growth surrounding the mouth of the shark, is said to have originated in Australian Aboriginal language and means shaggy beard. Wabagongs are often not thought to be hazardous to people, although they have attacked swimmers unintentionally, being snorkelers and scuba divers. The international shark attack file has 28 occurrences, while the Australian shark attack file has more than 50 reports of wabagong attacks that were unprovoked but did not result in fatalities. Surfers also get bitten by wabagongs. Wabagongs may readily bite a hand clinging onto their tail since they're highly flexible. They have a lot of tiny, sharp teeth, and even through a wetsuit, their bite may be extremely painful. Once they've bitten, they've been known to cling on and can be really challenging to get off. Number 3. The Jaranuk The Jaranuk is an extremely long-necked antelope, and its name translates to giraffe-necked in Somali. Although their eyes and ears are enormous for their size, their head's pretty little. Only the males have thick, strongly ridged horns, and they have a neck that's more powerfully muscled than the females do. They have a coat that's lighter on the sides and darker on the upper back. Due to the tuft hair on the back end, the short tail seems longer. 
These massive antelopes, like many other gazelles, have preorbital glands in front of the eyes that release a scent-bearing material that resembles tar that they deposit on branches and shrubs to mark their territory. Additionally, they have smell glands between their split hooves and on their knees, which are covered in hair tufts. Compared to most other gazelles and antelopes, they forage at greater altitudes. To feed on tall shrubs, they stand upright on their hind legs with their long necks stretched out. They can eat leaves up to 6 to 8 feet above the ground by using their front legs to pull down taller branches. They tend to like succulent plants and are among the most discerning browsers. Nevertheless, they do consume over 80 different plant species, including climbing plants, buds, flowers, fruit, and the fragile leaves and shoots of thorny shrubs. They don't eat grass and don't need water. They can thrive in arid thornbush habitat and even the desert because they can get adequate moisture from the plants they consume. Number 2. Shoebill Stork the shoebill is an enormous stork-like bird, sometimes referred to as a whalehead, whale-headed stork, or shoebill stork. It gets its name from that massive bill that resembles a shoe. Because of its overall shape, which is somewhat stork-like, it was formerly included with storks in the order Siconiforms. However, genetic information has put it in the Pelicaniforms order, with herons and pelicans. Compared to the adults, which are mostly gray, youngsters are more brown. It lives in vast wetlands in the tropical East Africa from Zambia to South Sudan. They're calm and don't attack around humans. The distance between the researchers and a bird in its nest was just 2 meters for some of these shots. Gamers are especially familiar with the shoebill since the Legend of Zelda Skyward Swords loftwing birds were modeled after them. Although mating is seldom recorded, shoebills are commonly seen in zoos. It's estimated that there are between 5,000 and 8,000 of them, with the majority living in the wetlands of South Sudan, Uganda, and the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as Zambia. Number 1. The Duggong The Red Sea, Indian Ocean, and Pacific Oceans, as well as other warm coastal areas from East Africa to Australia, are home to these huge vegetarians. Although the Duggong's tail is fluked like a whale's, it's related to mantises and has similarities with them in terms of looks and behavior. Although the two are also related to elephants, the enormous land mammal has little resemblance to either in terms of appearance. Day and night, Dugongs feed on aquatic grasses, sniffing and devouring them with their rough lifts and bristling sensitive snouts. These creatures can submerge for six minutes before coming to the surface. On occasion, they'll stand on their tails with their heads above water to breathe. Although they sometimes congregate in big herds of a hundred animals, dugongs spend most of their time alone or in pairs. After a year-long pregnancy, female dugongs give birth to one calf, and the mother assists the newborn as it rises to the surface and takes its first breath. For almost 18 months, a baby dugong stays close to its mother and sometimes rides on her big back. They've long been sought after for their flesh, oil, skin, bones, and teeth, making them an easy target for coastal hunters. Although dugongs are now legally protected in their entire habitat, their numbers are still in danger. Some people think that sirens and mermaids were based on dugongs in early maritime myths. I guess months at sea and the sailors can get pretty desperate, but kind of hard to see how these could be the inspiration for Ariel if I'm being honest. What's the strangest animal you've ever seen? Have you ever encountered any of the animals on our list today? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.